In today's video, I'm going to take you through an active setup inside of Google. I'll start with the daily time frame chart first with no indicators loaded on. Now price action is currently trading near the 139 level, currently at 138.83. I have a horizontal line drawn here at 139, and if I zoom in closer, you can see what that looks like. 139 has acted as this shorter term key level. We've seen it act as resistance, we've seen it act as support, and we've seen that once it's been broken, it's acted as new resistance. Price is currently slamming right back up into that 139 level, and that 139 was also Friday's high here. So there's multiple reasons why this is a key level that I'm paying attention to. Now if I come into a five minute time frame chart, you can see this a little bit cleaner. You can see just how many times that level has now been touched and how it's turned from previous support all in these circles right up here where it's acted as support, 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 and then turned into new resistance, new resistance, and now we're coming right back into that same level. Now if we zoom in, our current candles on the five minute time frame chart still don't suggest that the sellers have taken over control. If I load in our volatility box models, we can see that price is trading near the conservative clouds. Now it's looking like the sellers might be taking over control. But so far, price has just been chopping around here. Now if in this current candle, which just started printing about a minute ago, so we still have four more minutes left, but if this current candle can finish bearish and close below this prior candle's low, I think that would make for a really nice entry for a short side inside of Google, a short side entry. And that's off of the five minute time frame chart. So we'd be looking at a close below 138.76, that's this level right here, and we need that to happen on this current bar. That tells us that, hey, at least the sellers have enough strength to close below the prior candle's low. That's not really happened in this entire rally. The one time it happened was this candle right here, and that was smack dab in the middle of the lunchtime hour. So really, I would just call that noise, ignore it, and wait for our real entries where price action is showing us signs of being extended. So this is the entry I'm looking at inside of Google. We can still see the back and forth that's currently going on. I'm waiting for the sellers to tell me that, hey, we have control now. We expect to see some follow through, and that's going to be our sign to enter. So if we close below this prior candle's low, that to me, easiest trigger. Another alternative you might use is something like the momentum cross. So pick whichever works for you. I think the price closing below the low might be the easiest. Now say we don't want to sit here, wait and watch, keep monitoring this entire idea. We can have an automated script do the work for us. To do that, I'm simply going to right click, I'll click sell custom, and I'm going to select with OCO bracket. Now make sure if this is your first time practicing automated trading orders, you're doing it in paper money, and even when you do come to live money, start off with a really small quantity where you don't mind if you have a glitch in your code, things of that nature. Now let's start by clicking the settings icon to start writing our code. I'm going to come down here to our conditions. We'll click symbol inside of method. I'm going to select study, change the time frame to a five minute time frame, navigate to ThinkScript editor. And here the signal is going to be plot signal is if our close on the previous bar was less than the low from two bars prior. So two bars prior on this next candle would be this red candle and the close would be this previous candle. So that's why we're saying check that this candle's finished printing, that previous candle is less than the low from the prior bar. If this condition is true, then only do we want this entire order to trigger. We'll also say cancel this order at let's call it noon. So if we're within that final hour of the markets, this doesn't happen in the next 40 minutes, cancel this order. We're going to link this to the ask price. I'm going to click save here. Now for our targets, I'm going to link this to the average price. And that will simply just give us a plus and minus one, which we can adjust after or rather if we get filled. Now it's looking like that condition is going to be met. So I'm going to rush and press confirm and send. And now you can see that this order is automatically working for us. Now we're going to wait about 50 more seconds. If the candle finishes printing below this low, then this order should trigger us into this particular short side trade. So let's see what happens. Two, one, zero. 
Okay, so now you can see the order just got filled. We got filled into our five shares. Now we can adjust the stop as we'd like. So I'll put my stop above 139.25. And in terms of our target, since we're risking, let's call it about 65 cents, we're looking for at least 65. And our volatility box levels are right down here near that 138 mark. So that seems like a good place to try and see if price can get to. And this is how the day shaped up for Google. This candle right here, this red candle, is where our automated trading order got us into the order. The entry was near that 138.60 mark since we joined the ask price. From that point, you can see a little bit of chop, and then Google finally started to get going right into the close. This is pretty much up to the close, so you might have even closed your position a little earlier for slightly less than the max profit that we were looking for. Overall, though, the main idea of this exercise was to help demonstrate how to place that automated trading order, which got us into this particular candle without needing to manually execute the order. Now you can imagine how powerful that can be when say you know that, hey, anytime price reverses once we're inside of this zone, get me in, but you don't want to sit there and watch the position continuously. Well, this is one trick to do that. You save your time, you can place the order, adjust the stops and targets once you get filled. You can even do that from the get-go if there's set price levels and use that to let automated trading do a lot of the heavy lifting for you. I hope you found today's video useful for those of you looking to try and understand how to get better at automated trading inside of Thinkorswim. Take care everyone, good luck trading, and I'll see you in our next update.